Good day friends and once more I'm so glad you've been able to join me. During the summer when Jeanette and I were on holidays down the west coast of Ireland we visited Bunratty Folk Park. I'm going to share some memories of that day. It was a beautiful summer afternoon in early August. The sun shone all afternoon and a more pleasant trip could not have been imagined. Here is some footage of that event. The Folk Park is set in 26 acres of land and features over 30 buildings, mainly rural farm dwellings, thatched cottages, shops and workplaces from over a century ago. People were really enjoying themselves, dandering around, having coffee, listening to music and taking photographs. It all looked so idyllic on a hot summer afternoon and there is such an almost romantic image surrounding an Irish Stotch cottage. But we forget that these are places where people actually lived and worked at one time. And we could well wonder, what would it have been like to live here in the dead of winter with little to keep out the wind and rain and bitter cold? and darkness closing in at around 4.30 in the afternoon. Winter must have been very tough for the people living here about 150 years ago. What would it have been like in the days and weeks leading up to Christmas, I wonder? Certainly for the vast majority of folk, it would have been very different to the bright lights and festivities of our day and age. Past generations would often have talked about the dark days of Christmas, and indeed they were very dark days. The carol in the bleak midwinter, it's loaded with meaning and it describes a world we know nothing about whatsoever. But then of course, there are issues in our day that the people of the past could not have imagined in their wildest dreams. But in the context of what we were talking about, what would Christmas have been like for people living in conditions like this, especially when darkness fell? We might say, pretty grim. But going back further than that, what was the world itself like? What would have it been like before Christmas, before Christ came? The Bible describes it as the world being in darkness until Jesus, who would be the light of the world, would appear. I love the passage in Isaiah chapter 9. It was addressed to a people living in a world before Christ. But Isaiah gives the assurance that when the time was right, the Messiah, the Christ, the light of the world would appear. I want to read the passage now. It's Isaiah 9. It was addressed to a people living in a world before Christ. But Isaiah gives the assurance that when the time was right, the Messiah, the Christ, the light of the world would appear. I want to read the passage now. It begins, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has the light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and for evermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. 
a word which found its fulfilment in Jesus. Winter is a very dark time, as we've been reminding ourselves, and for past generations without electricity and street lamps, it would have been particularly long and dark. But regardless of the generation in which we live, darkness is a concept that's familiar to us all, especially in the dead of winter. But when we look at the passage in Isaiah, we see the Bible using the metaphor of darkness to describe a world without Christ. And it is very clear, to be living your life without the one who is the light of the world is to be walking in darkness. The Bible talks a lot about darkness, but never in a good or positive way. It is a place of hopelessness and sin. But it also talks about the people who once were in darkness, now seeing a great light. That light is Jesus. He has come into the world that he might save us from our sin and give us hope. And even in the darkest days when we have Christ in our hearts and in our lives, we have the light of his presence and we have his promises to cling on to. sing, Cradled in a Manger Mainly, is the title. But one of the verses is very thought-provoking in relation to what I've been talking about, and to those who have no interest in the message of Christ. The verse reads, And to those who never listen to the message of thy birth, who of winter but no Christmas, give to them thy peace on earth. So you know, I've often tried to think of what it would have been like having winter, but no Christmas. It would be very dark days indeed. So why walk in darkness when the light of the world is here? The Christ, the Messiah, the one who wants to come into your life in his transforming power and give you purpose and hope and assurance in these dark days. We'll continue our walk now round the folk park. we we'll listen to the music and I'll see you, God willing, next week. Bye.
Let us pray. Dear God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son into this world that first Christmas. We worship the Lord Jesus as the Saviour of the world and the one who is the true light, the Word made flesh, the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. We remember those who still walk in darkness because they have never acquainted themselves with the one who by his coming brought salvation and hope and light into a lost world. We pray, Lord, for those who have no interest in the Saviour of the world, like the carol says, those who have never listened to the message of thy birth, who have winter but no Christmas, give to them thy peace on earth. And help us, Lord, to be as your light, reflecting your glory, ever pointing all people to the one who came as the babe in the manger, the saviour of the world, and looking and waiting for your coming again in glory. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray and to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 